It was a study exploring the burden of peanut allergy in uh, adults in the US. Uh, it was a population-based study. The median age of the uh, patient or, or the participant in the study was about 30 years. Most were women uh, and most of them were white. Um, and uh, the those who participated in the study indicated they have peanut allergy and they were asked a series of questions, you know, what is the burden of peanut allergy? It was the quality of life questionnaire and food allergy um, uh, also impact uh, um, questionnaire. So the, um, you know, the, the gist of the study was that even, you know, like 25 years after the living, you know, living with this diagnosis, you know, because most of them were diagnosed by uh, within the first six years of life, the majority of them, 65%, reported a significant negative um, emotional impact, which is related to the fear of an allergic reaction. So that's very significant. Also affected their quality of life in multiple areas, you know, to significant extent. So, you know, I think peanut allergic adults sort of are flying under the radar. The most um, uh, attention is given to children with peanut allergy and for good reason they are mostly targeted through those therapies um, uh, and we feel like okay you know adults have been li living with this condition they're responsible they've learned how to do it but it's not really so based on that study people do report a, you know as there's a significant subset that reports discomfort with like you know managing the reactions or you know what would happen and also like fear of physical symptoms particularly respiratory symptoms so I think that this clearly indicates we need better strategies than just avoidance and carrying our emergency medication for both your know, children, particularly adults in that study. This is a great point because, you know, this is a very um, particular chronic condition, health condition, right? So, you know, this is a chronic disease, but you don't experience symptoms every day. You experience symptoms sort of episodically and in an unpredicted way. And when initial studies of uh, quality, you know, uh, food-related quality of life were performed, people were very surprised to find out that um, patients affected by food allergies reported worse you know, scores uh, or more, you know, impairment compared to people living with diabetes or cardiovascular, you know, uh, diseases. And then when you think about it, it's sort of, I mean, it makes sense to me because, you know, I have clinical experiences, like food is present every minute of your life, every social occasion or almost every social occasion, every time you're sort of, um, know charged with this decision am I eating this I'm not eating you know am I doing this not doing this you know if you have diabetes which which you know is obviously a very serious condition but you have this kind of a safety you know okay if I do my if I if I follow the instructions I take my insulin you know I'm going to be okay here is almost like okay you know I may have an allergic reaction and the medicine may or may not work and even though I mean actually the accidental reaction is very common you know, there was a study presented here which showed that over 12 months, 30% of kids were seen in the emergency room for, uh, you know, anaphylactic reactions related to peanuts. So, you know, um, there, we don't have the data from adults, actually. It would be interesting to, to look at, at the adult population to see that. So I think it's much more relevant because it's, it's a lifestyle, you know, like we always say this diagnosis has incredible implications for the lifestyle of the family of, of the patient but also the family it changes everything from what are your choices for vacation for travel for school you know where do you send uh, or, you know your kid to camp etc and also for adults you know which restaurants you go to who do you hang out with you know stuff like that so so i think it, it I, I think the quality of life you know, sort of metrics are particularly relevant for the food allergy and also like peanut allergy in particular.